Welcome to the Social Housing Podcast from Voicecape, the only podcast dedicated to helping social landlords build sustainable tenancies. During this series of podcasts, we'll be speaking to leaders from the social housing sector and beyond, hopefully challenging the status quo a little bit, and also stimulating discussion around how technology can be better utilised to help build sustainable tenancies. I'm your host, John Doyle, the Chief Exec and Founder of Voicegate. In addition to that, we, you know, we, we see that customers' expectations of how they pay for all these different sectors is it has changed massively over the years as well. You know, people are used to that one click or that thumbprint Amazon payment or, you know, a real-time rent balance on their smart meter. They expect that. And why shouldn't they get that in in when it comes to paying their rent? Because they're not actually getting that at the moment. But we see it in every other walk of life, every other service that those customers are using. They're getting that real-time payment, they're getting seamless customer journeys and, and all of that great stuff, that digital stuff, but they're not necessarily getting that when it comes to, to paying their rent. Typically, customers have a slightly disjointed uh, payment experience where if they're on a customer's website and they want to make a payment, they want to pay their rent, they're usually taken out to a third party website where they've got to remember possibly a new set of logins, they've got to remember a new reference number that's used for payments only. They might actually have to remember how much they owe as well and they've got to type it all in, so it's a completely disjointed experience. What the APIs do for the customers is allow them to make payment within that one resource that my account space that the customer has designed Ah, for them today's guest on the social housing podcast is vicky lynch who's the business development manager at paypoint plc now we've probably all seen the the little yellow stickers in our local news agents or post offices which allows people to pay utility bills and the rent and cash but they do much more than cash processing so i was hoping vicky that you could just provide us with a little bit of background on the sorts of things that you're currently doing within the UK social housing sector. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and in your introduction, you mentioned cash, which I guess everyone knows us for. And, and you know, most housing associations in, in the country are actually using us for a cash payment um, facility. That's typically for a reseller, but they will be, all of them, familiar with that cash payment service through a pay point store. What they might not be aware of is our digital payments platform called Multipay. Um, so Multipay is actually quite a mature product for us. It, 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 we released it in sort of 2014, 2015, and it started out as a, a, a sort of white label offering, really white label app, website, IVR, SMS. And we, we, we basically added a load of enhancements to make it suit housing. I went out and met with lots and lots of different housing associations and just to get feedback really on the common problems and, and, and what they really wanted to see from a payment provider. And there were so many common themes. It was so harmonious. It was like they were all singing off the same hymn hymn sheet. It was this problem, this problem, this problem. And because of that, we were able to make amendments to our product and make it fit for housing. So we made amendments, we made enhancements, we added whole new channels as well, just to make sure that it really responded to those problems. And because of that, we're finding that although cash is you know, still a very large percentage of the payments that, that are processed in the housing sector, particularly compared to other sectors, cash is still you know, very big. Um, even though that's the case, we're finding that housing associations such as Kiro Group, Midland Heart, Your Homes Newcastle, Selwood, they're coming to us for our digital offering because we have sort of sung to those, those, um, those problems that they experience. Okay. You mentioned that you've been in the social housing sector for a number of years now. And you obviously took that on as a bit of a personal project. I'm just wondering, you know, what are the sectors of Paypoint operating in? And could you do a bit of a compare and contrast? Because you mentioned about the prevalence Mm -hmm. of cash within social housing. How, How does it fit within your overall portfolio? Yeah, we work in lots of different sectors. So we work in um, fintech, e-commerce, gaming, mobile, utilities. We're quite strong in the utility space. In terms of the, the drop in cash transactions, obviously cash is going down generally in the UK population, but it's definitely been faster in some of those other sectors compared to housing. 
uh, housing still has quite a large percentage of cash cash transactions. We do have quite quite a lot of um, cash transactions in utilities still with people on prepayment meters. But the way that we've enhanced the technology now, it, we are seeing that shift, and it's typically shifting people from cash, and then it might be they use the IVR or a telephony service, and then it's shifting them onto web until you get them onto app, and you can see them moving slowly through the the different payment channels till they're on a fully self serve like digital digital channel that they regularly use. In addition to that, we you know we we see that customers' expectations of how they pay for all these different sectors is it has changed massively over the years as well. You know, people are used to that one click or that thumbprint Amazon payment or you know a real time rent balance on their smart meter. They expect that, and why shouldn't they get that in in when it comes to paying their rent because they're not actually getting that at the moment. But we see it in every other walk of life, every other service that those customers are using. They're getting that real-time payment, they're getting seamless customer journeys and, and all of that great stuff, that digital stuff, but they're not necessarily getting that when it comes to, to paying their rent. Okay, <clears throat> you and I have had a previous conversation when you've talked to me about digitization and digitalization. Mm. And it's quite a subtle difference. And I just wondered if you could sort of explain your views on that, because it was very interesting when we spoke. Yeah, absolutely. So um, digitalization is where you change or you transfer something from like an analog format into a digital format. And that can be something as simple as scanning in a paper document to make it available as a PDF. Digitization is bringing together separate pieces of software, separate services, so that they all speak to each other and can be used in a seamless way. A really good sort of live example of that is is um, with the NHS and, and digitizing of of medical records, paper medical records. Um, the first act, obviously, being scanning on in all those paper records so that they're available as a PDF. That's digitalization. That's actually just making it digital. That that one document dig, digital. The digitization part of the process is making that file available. Yes, at the GP surgery, but probably also, uh, you know, in a consultant's office in a hospital using a completely different piece of software is able to access that service. It's completely seamless and joined up and all the all of the different services are speaking to each other. What we find in housing, just to bring it back, is housing associations are really good at finding individual bits of software that solve a particular problem, whether it's, you know, chasing debt or it's, you know, a housing, really good housing management system or asset management system really good pieces of software but none of them speak to each other so you never really get that sort of single version of the truth that you need yeah i mean it's, it is an interesting technology ecosystem that most social landlords operate in i'm just wondering again from your experience have you got any examples where you think they've done a good job of digitization because i appreciate not everybody's on the same page but are there some examples of good practice around digitization that you've come across yeah, we did a, a, a project with, with Midland Heart um, a few years ago now, and they've, what they've created is a really great customer app, and that app does, um, you know, you can report a repair, you can track the engineer, track the repair, you get help with universal credit, and it's got loads of really great stuff in there that they just wouldn't have got from a white label payments app. So they've managed to enhance this customer journey by, by providing all of these different pieces of resources in there. But of course, they also wanted to make payment. They also needed to take payments in there. So what we're doing is we work, we're working with them, providing them with a, a payment API, a suite of payment APIs, where we're just processing the payment in the background completely seamlessly for the customer. They're still very much within Middle and Hearts app. They can have access to these resources. They can make a payment. In real time, we process that payment. We ping back to the customer and say, payment's been made. This is your real-time rent balance. They've got access to that real-time real rent balance. So it enhances the customer journey. But the interesting part is we also feed that transaction data back to Midland Hearts back office. So then Northgate can be updated in real time. So it actually improves the life of the organization as well. And it's fully digitized because it's all completely seamless. OK, that's that kind of leads into what I was going to ask you about, because you mentioned earlier this idea of a single version of the truth. And I think a lot of social landlords would resonate with that idea. Um, and you kind of touched on it there, but I was curious as to where PayPoint how are you playing in that ballpark, if you like? There's an ecosystem with other, other players, some more accessible than others, we know. But I'm just curious as to how are you going about that in terms of APIs and stuff like that? 
Yeah, so we're partnering with, with the sort of main um, CRM and, and housing management systems, completely agnostically as well with regards to that. You know, we're happy to, to join up the dots where, with whichever housing management system our customers use. But we're embedding our APIs essentially so that customers can make those seamless payments in the front end and also the organisation benefits in the back end. And there's technologically, there's a few ways we're doing that. So from a customer experience, we can obviously embed the APIs in the front end so that customer has that seamless payment experience I just described uh, that Middle and Heart are doing with their app. But we've also got APIs to, to do sort of self-serve direct debit sign up within a My Account space. Um, we've got the... So, you know, so, so, sorry, sorry the, to, to cut in, but just so it's clearer for me, because you're talking about embedding APIs and, and mm. stuff like that. Uh, are you saying that, <clears throat> in essence, the tenant goes on the social landlord's website and does all the business in one place. That's the perception to them. It's all happening in that one website site, that one web page. They're not getting diverted off anywhere else. So mm -hmm. the customer journey is seamless, but obviously in the back end, as you're suggesting, there could be half a dozen different things going on there that they're unaware of. Is that, is yeah. that my understanding that? Is that what you, you're getting at? Yeah, that's exactly it. So typically customers have a slightly disjointed uh, payment experience where they, if they're on a customer's website and they want to make a payment, they want to pay their rent, they're usually taken out to a third party website where they've got to remember possibly a new set of logins, they've got to remember a, a new reference number that's used for payments only, they might actually have to remember how much they owe as well and they've got to type it all in so it's completely disjointed experience. What the APIs mm -hmm. do for the customers is allow them to make payment within that one resource that my account space that the customer has designed ah, for them right, right, yeah. um, and also do things like sign up to direct debits and sign up to recurring car payments or just doing it all themselves completely self-serve about having to call up uh, you know a contact center and go for a, a process of signing up to a direct debit there and then in the back end with the organizations you're right there as well so for streaming it directly into a CRM system, all that transaction data, every time someone pays, we can update their account in real time within the CRM system. So the organization and the staff at that, that organization don't have to download overnight files of payments that took place the previous day, reformat that file, upload it here, there and everywhere. So we are reducing that massive amount of manual processing that happens both for kind of for the customer, but definitely for the organization as well. Okay, so what would you say is your single biggest point of differentiation at, at PayPoint for a social landlord? So we do, we're doing a few things differently, and uh, um, one of our things is is you know definitely going out and getting feedback and, and making sure that we are responding to the needs rather than just saying this is our product, it's not going to change for the next twenty years. It does payments, it ticks the boxes. You know, we actually want to respond to do, uh, to to the headaches and the problems that uh, our customers are experiencing, and that's why we're doing things kind of beyond payments. Really, that the API stuff, the feeding into the CRM systems, and and that sort of thing is is a little bit outside of of payments, but we but nobody else is tying it up. So we we really wanted to do that. And, and respond to those problems. But I think the main differentiator is the fact that we are implementing services that, that improve the customer journey and the organization experience. That doesn't seem to happen anywhere else or with the incumbent suppliers. And I don't know why that is. Um, having spoken to these clients, you know, they, the, the, the solutions that seem to pique their interest the most are the ones that, say, that solve their problems as an organization. I think it's because for the, the, the incumbent they've had for the last five, 10, 15, 20 years, however long it was, has never asked them what those problems are um, and, and has never really sought to, to fix those problems that the organizations have had. It's all great having these sort of digital customer ambitions, which is great because they all have their customers at heart, but if actually this it creates more manual problems and it's more of a, a headache in the back end because you're creating all these diff different processes just to improve the customer journey, then it, it's not a solution that works. Yeah, I must admit, I've always thought the idea of self-service portals for people with arrears is a little bit of an oxymoron <laughs> because it's like, well, if they were self-serving, they wouldn't be in arrears. You know, there is yeah. that thing going on. But yeah. um, there's a lot in common. PayPoint got a lot, of common, lot in common with VoiceScape. It's obviously why we're chatting here today because the whole idea of process automation, releasing capacity to do the more complex tasks and doing it all in a joined up way, it resonates with us, makes perfect sense. I was wondering, have you got um, any particular case study, use case that you can speak to for what your 
considering is your current state of the art proposition within mm -hmm. social housing? Yeah, um, so it's really about automating as many of the processes as possible. So allowing income managers time to focus on, you know, the, 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 the real challenges. And you do that by having a, a fully realized self-serve environment um, and making those self-serve environments fit for purpose. So people that can self-serve can self-serve. So they're not calling in for no reason. Um, and then you can make calls out to the people that you do actually need to contact, for example. So one of the good use cases that we've got from our clients is, is, is actually that they said that one of the main reasons that people click onto their website. So the biggest hit on their website um, and the main reason that people call into the contact center is to find out what their rent balance is, to find out what their, their rent statement is. Have you received yeah. my rent? You know, it, it, it's quite a simple thing really. And, and, the, and the, the housing association that I'm referring to actually have the ability to project a rent statement at the moment, but it's out of date transaction data. So it would actually cause more problems than, than it had actually solved. It'd probably generate more hits on the website and more calls into the contact center. Um, so we're working with them on a project to obviously provide them with that real-time rent balance, that real-time rent statement. And once that's available, it'll be self-serve. So then the customers can find it within their My Account without actually having to um, call in or, or, or vigorously search the website for some kind of information about you know, whether or not their, their rent's been received. Yeah, I think it's incredible in this day and age, as you say, that you can't have a real-time rent balance, a real-time picture. Because I know one of some of our experiences, coming back to where we started this conversation about cash payments, one of the things that seems to be very difficult to get into the mix is the fact somebody might have made a cash payment at a post office and that doesn't show on the system for a couple of days, which is which is mind-boggling in the, you know, it's 2021 what's going on yep <laughs> yeah and on on that point that's a, that's a you know another perfect example of this a use case from one of our other clients whereby they've said what happens is we the income managers don't know who to chase because they chase some people and that person actually had paid their rent they paid it this morning in a post office you just the organization just didn't know and sometimes they don't know it's not on the housing management system until 24 hours but sometimes as long as three days later um so they could be chasing someone for three days or the day after they've actually paid on the flip side of that we've also been told that some customers have cottoned on that it takes that time to validate whether or not their rent is paid so the income manager's chasing somebody um that somebody says i have paid i paid this morning knowing full well of course that that wouldn't be validated till till the next day and then they'll probably just ignore the phone call so having that real-time rent balance not, not only makes it easy for the customers to self serve but obviously gives the the income managers and the income team that that efficiency they need so they're chasing the right people yeah i, I think it, it, i find it incredible that you know I, I have online banking with hsbc something i had to turn off the other day i turned it on inadvertently was a notice every time money went out of my account so right, okay. I was getting pinged three and four or five times a day. What the hell is that? I buy a sandwich on my switch, <laughs> on my on my switch, if you like, on contactless. And the next thing, my phone had bing because it was telling me that I just spent five quid on a sandwich. So that notion of real time transactional data is out there for you know Joe public on the street. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it is, as you say, a little bit mind boggling that it isn't available uh, or it hasn't been available for social landlords. So rather than Paraton, I'd, I'd just like to thank you, Vicky, for joining us on the Social Housing Podcast. I think it's really interesting, really insightful. I'm hoping it's a problem that lots and lots of organisations can relate to, because I know mm -hmm. uh, within our client base, it is something that comes up time and time again, which is why VoiceGate are very, very happy to be working with PayPoint to come up with more of those joined up solutions. So without further ado, I'd just like to thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. If you are new to the Social Housing Podcast, please subscribe if you're listening via Apple Podcasts or leave a follow if you use Spotify. Also, please remember to leave us any feedback, good, bad or ugly. It can only help serve improve us. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention. I appreciate that everybody's busy, but I do hope you learned something from the experience. I certainly did. Thanks again. And I'll see you next time on the Social Housing Podcast. Goodbye.